Hey everyone, Christian here from CK Wraps. We're gonna do the side skirt on this wide body Benz, all right? This is an E550 Benz, and it's got a custom wide body on it. So I have no idea, I've never worked with any, anything like this before. This side skirt is pretty intricate as far as the way it's designed. So we have a pretty heavy recess right here, another one near the back. So this is gonna require that we probably do some relief cutting and also laying into this area. I'm not doing inlays. It's possible, I guess you could do an inlay and I'm looking at it now, one on the top piece right here and follow this body line where it comes to a point at the end there. It's just not gonna look as nice. I'm, I'm pretty certain we can do this in one piece, so we're going to. Also, we have to work around this carbon fiber trim on the bottom. So this carbon fiber trim is not removable. It's built right into the side skirt. It's actually got a little overspray on it, so it's not perfect as far as how cons the, it, it being completely lined off goes. Um, so we're, we're gonna do our best to cover everything. We're probably gonna end up overlapping that carbon fiber a little bit. It's more of like a rubber piece. So, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna freehand cut around this. We're not using knifeless because the knifeless actually won't stick to it. So in certain situations, we can't always use knifeless tape because knifeless doesn't stick to everything. And that this piece, for whatever reason, is one of those pieces that it won't stick to. So we have to freehand cut around it. We've masked off these areas because we're going to need the film to slide off so we can tuck it in and underneath this bottom edge here a little bit around this trim and then continue to fold the rest of the film under. What I've done here is I've put an inlay on the back, sorry, on the front and back pieces because they're about that wide. So it's about that wide. And to fold the film over, you could, but we risk overstretching the film in that case. It's better just to put a piece on the back when it's that wide and then overlap a small edge over top of that. And no one's ever gonna notice that that inlay in there because it's in the wheel well, first of all. Second of all, your, your edge is gonna be facing inside the wheel well. All right, so let's get to it. I've already wiped the surface down with isopropyl alcohol. I have the piece cut here. Another difficulty that we run into is that this entire kit is all fiberglass. And everything is fiberglass, so nothing is magnetic. So what I have to do is I have to peel the vacuum off a little bit and stick it down, which I'm gonna do here. Up there on the top of the fender, it is still magnetic. That's like the only place and across the pillar or across the top. Once you come lower down on that rear quarter panel, it doesn't stick anymore. So kind of a pain, but we're gonna, we're gonna work around it either way. So we're just gonna stick that there a bit like that, bring this side down as well. So now the magnets don't work. So we're gonna get this into the position that we need it, generally. I'm not even sure this piece is big enough, it should be fine as far as the, the height goes. It's cutting it pretty close though, but it's fine. I'm just looking at what's going on down there. So we should be good. I'm just gonna double check down here now. And we should be good, all right. Let's see that back down there. I'm gonna peel the backing off from this side. First of all, I'm gonna cut off bit of this, a bit too much, get that out of the way, all right? So we're gonna keep it as uniform as possible when we're removing the backing paper. And because this is a vertical surface, it's a bit easier to keep the film a little bit more straight. So because it's just kind of hanging, all right? As opposed to it laying flat down on the hood, the roof, or the trunk. All right, so for a process like this, you're most likely gonna to wanna to lift the car off the ground. As you can see, I have this car on jack stands. And we need to find a nice center point that works, all right? So somewhere right around there should be good, where the film is just gently resting. Alright, so we're going to do 
that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start squeegeeing some of the bottom here in order to kind of hinge it a little bit better because we're going to be pulling. Most of the pulling is going to be coming from the top as we lay in, as we lay into that recess. So this is the easy part right here. This is. I might as well get this done and out of the way. Again, we're coming up to we're coming up to the carbon fiber piece. So like I said, I'm not really totally sure how I'm gonna do it, but I think we'll be fine. So what I want to do right now is cut on that masking tape that I put over the carbon fiber, all right? I'm just going to put a slit, basically. Put a slit in the, near the middle of it, all the way down. Not all the way down, but I'm going to leave a bit. I'm leaving about a centimeter from each end. This is going to help us get the film around the rest of it, all right? looking for that edge of the carbon fiber piece. Okay, so once we create that slit, now we have, now we can pull down the rest of the way over here really easily and continue to work this film underneath a little bit. It's not, there's not a whole lot to see right now. I'm just, you can see how the film just wants to slide off of here. And that allows us to finish off the front and back section for the most part because this carbon fiber trim actually runs very close to the bottom of the side skirt and you're not going to notice I don't think you're going to notice anything and you just if you if you don't have full coverage down here because we're actually underneath the side skirt right now so not a big deal but we're going to wrap in about an inch or so underneath still just to ensure that we have full coverage all right so it's better to work, I made a bit of a mistake, I worked from both ends in, I should be working from the middle out. So this, now I have to go and bring this out a little bit more here, because I have too much slack. There we go. So as far as all that goes, we're underneath that carbon fiber piece. I'm just gonna squeeze you down a little bit more. And then we're gonna cut off the excess. So lifting the car will obviously help you see a little bit better and it will also keep the dirt and dust away. I am cutting on the paint under here. It's actually on most cars very scratched up under here so just from dirt and stones and everything hitting it. It's a very, there's almost no paint left. You get that entirely out of the way. All right, so now that we see how to work around something like this with a bit of masking tape, we just end up tucking everything into the edge and then trimming around this piece afterwards, all right? Super easy to get around. We're gonna get onto the tough stuff, which is this top portion right here. So 
what I want to do is most likely start laying in a little bit here just to create some consistency. And we need to take some stretch. Where we want to stretch first would be in an area like this, all right? Because we're gonna take the stretch from over here. So I'm gonna start heating over here while we push into here. Let me grab the heat gun, which is right here. And we're gonna need our glove. So I plugged it. our glove for this. So we need to start getting the film into this recess first. And this is going to require a post heat no matter what because we are stretching the film. Work up. back a little bit because I saw a couple of tiny air bubbles. Using your finger is probably the best option. It's going to be hard to get in there with a squeegee, all right? So I'm adding a little tension pulling up just to keep it as consistent as possible. If we don't add a little tension going up, we're going to get a lot of fingering, all right? Let's see how far we have to go here. We got a bit more to go. Now, there's always risk when we do stuff like this, all right? But trying to get it done the most effective way and durable way is important. So understanding at least we know we tried to do it the way it was meant to be done. And if it doesn't work out, then we redo it and we do it a different way. We do do the inlay in here. So this is why when you're wrapping a car, if you're wrapping somebody else's car, it's good to have the car a couple of extra days once you're finished the job because the film will settle. And so it'll give you a good opportunity to see if anything's going to move. I'm always trying to get that recess in there first. And then I'm going to work out afterwards. Would have been nice if I had a little more slack, but we're, we have what we have, and we're gonna work with it. Almost there. I got like an inch and a half to go. All right, so we're up and over. I'm gonna finish this piece off right here. And level that out a bit. start bringing some of this in right now. Probably use my squeegee for this. Let's keep 
everything in line. A little bit of air right there. Let's get that out. All right. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. I want to just fix this up a little bit by lifting it off. That way when I cut, it's going to be nice and straight. All right. Go in there, heat that guy up. Yep. That's not a full post heat, I just wanted to kill a bit of the memory so we don't have any lifting right away. Let's get, let's get this other side down now, all right? There's a mark here, I saw it, it was um, uh, actual, it's fiberglass, so if you step on it or hit it or anything like that, it get, gets a lot of indentations, but there's a whole bunch on the bottom. There's one little guy right there. Let's do this side. Same concept, guys, except I don't think this side is as intense as that side. reason being why this side isn't as intense as that side is because that side curves in faster than this side. This is more gradual, all right? So we actually have a greater opportunity to lay the film in pretty much not even using any heat. See? still all right so I haven't even I didn't even have to use heat still see air in there sorry one second let's use the squeegee it'll be easier we're gonna need so we didn't use any heat to stretch it in now we're gonna need some heat to level all this out right here maybe maybe not I'm gonna put my hand there just so I don't rip all the vinyl off as I pull that back and reposition it, right? Add a bit of heat, just a touch. And that's gonna help me get that a little bit more consistent. So when we're doing stuff that you haven't done before, you have to kind of get a feel for how you're gonna do it. There's many different ways you can go about doing things. I see some air in here still, sorry. So understanding how you're gonna tackle the project is a big part of the role when, when it comes to vinyl wrapping. Now it's smooth. I was cutting it pretty close here, but I left myself enough to tuck over. And we're good. Let's just finish up this guy over here. Post heat this right now. I'm going to show you all about that. I'm just, I didn't think to grab my thermometer. It's right over here. So let me grab that. <laughs> all right. So I have my digital thermometer. All right. We can put this and point it, and it tells us the temperature of that surface. All right. That surface is 88, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. We want this to hit about 180, 190. Some guys. We'll say 200, 220, I think 180, 190 is enough. You don't need any more than that. So we're going to take our heat gun. We're going to take our heat gun. 
and we're going to heat up the area, all right? We're going to check it every once in a while. It's not going to take long since this heat gun is really hot. Move your heat gun away, check it. All right, we're at 127, we're going to go higher. Most of the stretch was over here. I didn't really have any over here at all, so I'm not really that worried about it. Make sure you move your heat gun out of the way. It's very important, all right? Because otherwise you're gonna be picking up the heat from your heat gun. 176, go a little bit more. It's probably gonna be around 190, 200 now. 200, all right, 190, 200, perfect. The memory in this film should be dead, all right? That's the idea of a post heat. Generally speaking, when you post heat something, We've just destroyed the memory in that film. There should be no recoil from that, from that film. I don't care how much you stretched it. If you stretched it three feet and it was only a foot piece, if you kill the memory in that film, the memory will be dead. Now the film might not look very good because it's gonna be, the color is gonna be inconsistent. So we have to watch how much we stretch, but in the end, you don't wanna be post-heating everything so much. So the idea is to save time and do it so that we're effectively laying the film where there's not so much strain on the film. When we have to do areas like this, okay, yes, we do have to post heat because it's very important because I did add stretch. So we're gonna have to do this side over here right now. So same idea. This one had a lot more stretch. So I wanna really make sure that we give it a good one. I'm gonna check it because I don't wanna go too high. I don't wanna hit like 250. We could damage the film if we go a little bit too high. Check it again. Let's check it across. Just a little more. One eighty-eight. We probably hit it. It's close. Two hundred five. One seventy-eight. 199, 187, a little more over here. 170, 180, all right? I'm good with that. I'm comfortable with that. I'm pretty certain that this film isn't gonna go anywhere. When you post heat it, the film will become very sticky, especially when it gets that hot. So try not to touch it and run your fingers down it. You can push down a little bit if you think you need to, but I wouldn't touch it at all. So in that recess there, I wouldn't touch that recess at all. Just let it cool, and we're gonna have to give this a second before we start cutting it all out, because it needs to cool down. It's much more difficult to cut the film when it's hot. So for all this, what we wanna do is, I can actually just finish this bit off here, because I, I don't have much to tuck in. And I put the masking tape on the door so that I don't cut through the paint, through the uh, film that's already there. Let's get this masking tape off. That, all right. I just want to get a good line here and see, because we need to tuck in the door a little bit and I want to have a nice straight line when we do that, all right? So what I'm gonna do over here is finish this. And then we're gonna go around the door here a little bit. So that this piece can kind of flap down, all right? That helps. Now we can kind of open the door, we have a little bit more room for things that we can do. Alright. Let's do this. Open the door. Let's see. So what I want to do here is kind of get rid of 
a little bit of that, there's too much excess. Perfect. There's a bit too much excess film there. That way I can tuck it in. I just put my blade. There we go. Let's go lift it off. It, the, the vinyl does stick to the painter's tape a little bit, all right? It's not completely non-stick free, all right? So it does stick a little bit. Sometimes you have to lift it off and help it along. Such a tight gap between the door and the side skirt that it's really even difficult to get my squeegee in there. But we got it. Let's cut this. This gap is not very large as opposed to the back one, which is a bit larger. This is what happens when you have aftermarket kits. Sometimes they don't quite line up, but needless to say, the kit is actually amazing. It's very well done. So that in. Now we can pop this door open. As long as we're not stuck to the door, we can pop the door open. And then we can get inside there and run the film inside a little bit. All right, so we're gonna hold this down, make sure we're good. And we're not gonna rip the film. And we're gonna start tucking it inside a little bit. We'll finish off this area over here. So lucky for me, this goes all the way in up to the, the gap that's right here, so where the, where the side skirt meets the car. So we can actually just trim it right on that edge and not worry about anything. And it gives it a more complete look actually. So we can, I, if we didn't go that far, we could just draw a line off. Essentially just something marking the plastic. We could just draw a line off here and then cut a nice straight line down. As long as when you close the door, everything's covered, you're good. All right. So as far as accessibility goes, I'm having issues accessing this part right here because of the door being so tight against this. So I'm going to put a bit of a relief cut here and hopefully be able to tuck that film underneath. While I have the door open, I'm going to heat it and round that corner off nicely. And then we're going to take our squeegee right now and we're going to fold in the rest of this if we can. And I should be able to reach that on the other side of the door now. All right, so let's do that. Let's see. All right, it's all the way over here. Just a little 
piece out of the way. So let's finish it off. If you want, you can take your doors off to make life easier and more accessible, but taking the doors off is a huge process. It's not necessary. All right, so I just wanted to show you, all I have to do is cut this out right now, so not a big deal, but I just want to show you how we get in and do these recesses with the post heats, how we push into these areas first, as, as far as where the heaviest stretch is going to be. So sometimes we're forced to stretch the film, we have to do it if we want to have a more seamless look on the vehicle. So stretching the film in this area right here, created a nicer finished piece instead of doing an inlay here. Now, like I said, if, if you try this out and it doesn't work, then you have to do an inlay here and you have to redo the piece, not a big deal. You learn and then you move on to something else. So knowing the limitations of the film is a, is a big importance when it comes to wrapping and uh, you know, just knowing how far you can push it. And if you don't want to take the risk, then you may never end up getting better at installing. But if you take risks and you, and you fail, then you learn and it's, that's, for the most part is very important you know when i learned how to wrap a car we, i failed many times so, and it's learning how to do things a little bit better and learning from those mistakes that help me get better at doing what i do and i just teach you for the most part what i learned from my mistakes going and doing this so let's see that's more or less how this looks and if she wants to step back she can kind of show you what this car started to look like I'm just going to remove some of the tape so you can see a bit more of a finished product. Alright, but it's a pretty nice color. It's showing the body lines of the vehicle really well, especially with the wide body. The black was hiding it a lot. This color is amazing. So, showing it off really nicely. These shades, especially matte finishes, really accentuate body lines. Alright, and if your tape leaves a little adhesive behind, you can just use a little isopropyl alcohol. This tape is actually pretty bad. It's bad for leaving adhesive behind. Um, I bought it at Home Depot, it's 3M. But anyways, you can just get it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Not a big deal. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you like this and it helped you learn how to wrap something a little bit more complex for the most part, including a side skirt on top of that, like, give it a thumbs up, and if you like my channel, please subscribe because there will be more videos. Thanks for watching. Take care.